White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre struggles over Biden's document scandal. A judge strikes down New York's COVID vaccine mandate for healthcare workers. Plus, Democrats like Sheila Jackson Lee continue the assault on free speech. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean Pierre, because as you know, she's terrible. But if you add a real scandal to it, like classified documents being found in Joe Biden's office, his home, his garage, the whole aura of incompetence jumps to a whole new level. Here's Jean Pierre when asked about the fact she said the search for documents is over yet more are still being found. I have been forthcoming from this podium. What I uh, said yes to was what the statement at the time that we all had, right? You all had the statement, uh, and I was repeating what the what the uh, council was sharing at that time. Right, and had, so- We had that statement, so we knew what was in it, but you also exactly. knew, did you not know that- the I'm telling you, I just answered the question. I just said that I was repeating what the information that we had at that time. As is her usual practice, she didn't actually answer the question. She simply repeated what was on a statement that reporters already had. And then she went into her trademark slogan. If Jen Psaki had circle back, Jean-Pierre is the master of, let me be clear. So just to be very, very clear. Uh, and look, I've also been very clear about being prudent from here. I was also being very clear about being consistent from here. Uh, and not going uh, beyond uh, what is currently happening, right? What's great about Jean-Pierre's go-to line is that she is actually never clear. At one point, Jean-Pierre was asked whether Joe Biden himself was helping search for documents since they are being found in his home. Look, I'm going to be very consistent here. Uh, I am going to be very clear here, uh, as I have been for the past couple of days, almost a week now, uh, dealing with this. Uh, you know, we are going to any specific questions that you have about this issue. I would refer you to my colleagues at the White House Counsel's Office. Who so here's what really gets me about Jean-Pierre. It's one thing not to wade into specific legal matters or military strategy or diplomatic nuances. Sometimes the right thing to do is to refer the press room to an expert. Fine. But she does that all the time and won't answer anything. There are questions, however, that she should be able to answer, and she doesn't answer those either. Here's a perfect example. The White House says Republicans are faking outrage on this issue. Why shouldn't Americans be outraged about classified documents being found in a garage? Look, and I think I've been very clear about this. We have answered questions on this at this podium. You've heard, as Phil was saying twice from the president, talk about this. He said that he didn't know. Right? He said that he was surprised, and he said that he takes classified information and documents very, very seriously. Great question, because the reporter isn't asking about specific legal items. He's just asking, why shouldn't the American people be outraged? In other words, he's asking, what's the president's opinion of the public outrage? She is the spokesperson for the president, and all she ever says is, let me be clear, and then doesn't answer the question. In the meantime, more questions are being raised about Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, the House, the documents, while the press secretary is in over her head. Okay, next let's talk about COVID vaccine mandates. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about COVID vaccine mandates because some good news just came out of the state of New York. Judge Gerard Neri has ruled that New York Governor Kathy Hochul and the state's health department exceeded their executive authority by imposing a vaccine mandate on healthcare workers. The legal reasoning is that it is the legislative branch that determines vaccine mandates through the state's public health law, not the executive branch. I personally don't care what the reason was behind the ruling. All I know is that COVID vaccine mandate, wherever it is, needs to go. So this is a great ruling. And here's the story. Neri also found that the mandate was arbitrary and capricious, citing evidence that COVID-19 vaccines don't prevent the spread of the virus. 
undercutting the basis for the mandate. In true Orwellian fashion, the respondents' knowledgeable than current COVID-19 shots do not prevent transmission, Neri wrote, citing a summary of assessment of public comment that was entered as evidence in the case. I love it. The judge is actually citing the science, or in this case, what I call the big lie. Not only does the vaccine not stop you from getting COVID, it doesn't stop you from spreading COVID. And that was the entire basis for vaccine mandates, forcing people to take an experimental drug that doesn't do what we were told it would do. And now, as we're learning, causes some serious, serious problems. Here's more. The ruling came after a lawsuit was filed by medical professionals for informed consent, a group of medical professionals who were negatively affected by the vaccine mandate and either lost their jobs or faced the prospect of job loss. This is a huge win for New York healthcare workers who have been deprived of their livelihoods for more than a year, the plaintiff's lead attorney, Shujata Gibson, said in a statement. This is also a huge win for all New Yorkers who are facing dangerous and unprecedented healthcare worker shortages throughout New York State. This is such great news, and I hope there are many more lawsuits to come. Any company that imposed a COVID vaccine mandate should pay the price. All right, next let's talk about Democrat Sheila Jackson Lee, the Democrats in general, and the ongoing effort to censor and eliminate free speech. Eliminate free speech and you have control. And that is exactly what the left wants. Consider what we get on an ongoing basis. The left wants to take your guns. They attack religion and they are increasingly trying to limit free speech. Take those three aspects to their logical conclusion and you have a totalitarian society. The latest move by Sheila Jackson Lee fits right in as she has put forward legislation aimed at white people who say things about people of color. Here's the story. The Texas Democrat introduced the Leading Against White Supremacy Act of 2023, which aims to prevent and prosecute white supremacy inspired hate crime and conspiracy to commit white supremacy inspired hate crime. The conspiracy addition means people who use hate speech online could face criminal charges under the legislation even if they don't act on their threats. Now, to say that is a slippery slope is an understatement. To say that this is an attack on the First Amendment is clear. What this bill says is that if I were to post something on social media, perhaps saying that Sheila Jackson Lee is a race-baiting anti-American socialist, then if someone read that and committed violence, that I could also be charged. Keep in mind that this doesn't apply to saying things against white people. That's fair game. Here's Candace Owens commenting on the legislation. The Democrats know that in order for them to be omnipotent, they need to be able to control words because if they can control words, they can control, control thoughts. And ultimately what they're after is brainwash. And by the way, yeah. they've been really good at brainwash. If you, speaking of what you just spoke about, you have people that are graduating. I just talked about this today. Graduating Harvard who actually believe that men can be women and women can be men. And all we have to do is change our minds. Great comments by Owens. And she also points out how the Democrats never quite think things through noting that some of the most vile hate speech is directed at black conservatives. What would the Democrats do if they couldn't attack Clarence Thomas or Candace Owens or others anymore? What would they do? The bill has no chance of passing and it is blatantly unconstitutional, but it shows you that the left will not stop until they have complete control. All right, next the left's push for transgender ideology and sexualization of children took a hit in Des Moines, Iowa after the local Catholic diocese announced new policies that would govern churchgoers and students at all the area churches and schools. The move marks a reinforcement of science, common sense, and faith. Here's the story. The Diocese of Des Moines in Iowa has been praised for leading the war on woke by banning preferred pronouns in schools and parishes and ruling that students and worshipers must use the bathrooms and locker rooms of their biological sex. The new stipulations from the Diocese of Des Moines went into effect on Monday and all revolve around how the religious organization deals with gender at its 16 schools in 80 parishes across the state. This is a great move and it comes down to a simple fact. Males are males and females are females. Here's more. The Diocese of Des Moines Communications Director Anne Marie Cox confirmed Monday that all seven of the stipulations ranging from the pronoun and locker room enforcement to the banning of gender blockers will go into effect immediately. 
Diocese of Des Moines codifies ostracism of transgender kids. Democrat State Senator Claire Kelsey wrote in a Facebook post after the new rules were announced. The Democrat went on to claim that the rules could drive kids toward suicide. Oh my gosh, these people have no shame. And how many of you think that these so-called transgender children are simply being pushed that way by left-wing parents? I'm so glad that this diocese is doing the right thing. Okay, next, with all the push for electric vehicles, such as in California and other blue states, states that can't even meet their current electricity demands, we have Wyoming, which may be going in a different direction. As Wyoming flipping things around from what other states are doing, get this, Wyoming is proposing a bill to ban new sales of electric vehicles by <coughs> 2035. The bill highlights the value of oil and gas production on Wyoming's economy and the labor market, claiming that fossil fuels will be important to transport people, goods and services, not electric. Five states have already pushed to ban gas powered vehicles in the same time period. Now, it's all well and good that Wyoming wants to protect its critical industries. And I would never support something like a California bill that attacks the oil and gas industry. It's just a simple fact that fossil fuels meet most of America's energy demands in the most affordable way for consumers. However, the market should decide who the vehicle winners and losers will be. It should not be mandated by government. The key is for American people to have the full story. Electric vehicles are not environmentally friendly. The raw materials are controlled by foreign countries which would destroy our energy independence and impose a national security risk. And of course, there's the humanitarian side. You have these big burly American guys getting American oil for Americans. Who's getting the raw materials for electric car batteries? Kids like this. Kids in the Congo in a cobalt mine. The point is, buy whatever you want. But before you wrap yourself in the green narrative, get the full story. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all videos and stories used on today's show, so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Friday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.